All right, so this Knife Thoughts video is going to be on this knife. And if you're a Spyderco fan, you probably have an idea what this is. This is an exciting one. Um, so as always, check out my website, knifethoughts.com, for articles on knives like this. And I'm planning on doing an article on this actual knife also, as well as my social media, Instagram, Facebook, etc., all at Knife Thoughts. But this knife is a knife that I found recently at a gun show. I don't normally find that many, you know, really interesting finds at gun shows. I think now that you can look everything up on the internet, if someone has an idea of what they have, or at least a name, they can look it up on eBay and find, you know, the highest price someone is willing to pay and market at that. But I was able to find this uh, for a reasonable price and decided I really needed to get it because I, I knew right away looking at it for a couple of reasons that it was something interesting and special. So what is this? Well, this is a Spyderco Worker. And the Worker is the first knife design that Sal Glasser of Spyderco had made after he had the sharpening system, so after he was selling the sharpening system. So this is the first Spyderco knife. And not only is this, this the first Spyderco model, this is actually from the first run of knives that Spyderco did. So it's the C01 Worker, and this one is from the very first run from 1981 to 1982. And how I know that is because of this clip. So you can see that this clip has two screws instead of three, like the later workers. It also has kind of this almost, you know, not perfectly stamped uh, uh, clip. So kind of funny there that, you know, they're still kind of getting that worked out in this first run. And then another thing that signals to you that this is not from later runs of workers is that the handle slabs are very thin and a good comparison is to this also very early Spyderco Police. You can see that the handle slabs on this worker are much thinner, maybe almost half as thin or half as thick, I guess. That's one thing that tells you it's from the earliest runs. Uh, also that both scales are the same thickness. On later runs, the clip side was thicker. And uh, the swedge here that I'll talk about later is actually sharpened. So really, really cool knife. When I saw that it had the two uh, crews, sorry, clip screws, I knew that this was an old model and I looked it up and confirmed that this is from the first run. So really cool just because it's a part of Spyderco history and it's, you know, the knife that really changed the knife industry. So before this knife, there were certainly a lot of knives that had backlogs. So rather than being up here, which Spyderco, when I was reading about this knife, apparently, I don't know if they still do, but call a front lock. I know they call it a mid lock sometimes, but in the Wikipedia article, they called this a front lock, but a back lock is the more traditional style of this lock where you depress it down here. And what that does is it requires two hand closing. So you would open the knife usually with two, well, always with two hands, then you would press and close it with two hands. So it required two hands for both opening and closing. Spyderco did away with the two hand closing by bringing the lock button up here so that you can press it. And you can see that this knife is really smooth and close it like so with one hand really easily. And that's one thing that Spyderco focuses on even now is making sure that when you uh, depress a lock and the blade closes, it's not gonna close on your finger. Uh, so they still design their knives that way so that this kick area hits your finger rather than the edge. And the other thing that this knife introduced was this, what we all know Spyderco for, other than for their quirky designs, which this is a great example of, is the spider hole. So you can see that it, it's this very, very small spider hole compared to uh, more modern spider kind of knives. I'll give you an example real quick. You can see how much bigger this native fives spider hole is. It does make it easier to get your thumb into it. And then another example is this efficient. And I'm doing a video on those uh, two knives real soon. But it's a small spider hole, but it introduced that one hand opening. Before this, pretty much all folding knives had had 
a nail nick or you know a hole that was designed so that it you know had to be opened with two hands spyderco brought this closer to the pivot now i think on more modern spydercos it's even closer than this but they brought this hole closer to the pivot so that you can open it really easily and efficiently with one hand so that was a really big advancement and really changed and shook up the knife industry and it's why now we have all these different modern knife brands from Kershaw and Zero Tolerance to Benchmade to, you know, every other myriad of, of knife companies that we have now is because Spyderco introduced these features. And not that that's the last feature that this introduced. Another one is the clip itself. Before this knife, very few, if any, knives had clips that were designed to be clipped to your clothing or your pocket. There were knives with uh, like lanyards and knives with a clip attached to a string even, and knives with button uh, clips that you t attached it to a, a, the chain was attached to it and you attached it to your button. But all of those you still really had to dig down in your pocket, find it, orient it in your hand, and open it. And that's one thing that Sal Glesser and Eric, his son, who's doing a lot of the designing now, talks about is the fact that when you have a knife you know, clip to your pocket, you reach in, right away your thumb is right there to open it. You can open it without having to, you know, fumble around in your hand, sorry for shaking the camera, and, you know, just use it. And then with this front lock, as they call it, you can close it with, well, I did two hands there, but you can close it with one hand and be done using it and just slide it right back in your pocket. So a lot of really cool, uh, things introduced by Spyderco on this knife that really in a major way changed the knife industry to what it is now. Without this knife, there, there wouldn't be the, the modern tactical knives that we have now or mod, uh, one hand opening, but including tactical knives. I don't consider all modern knives tactical knives, you know, any more than I consider all slip joints traditional knives. But another really interesting feature of this knife, not that, that Spyderco necessarily introduced this feature, but it wasn't something you saw in a lot of knives, is this false edge. So because of the design of this knife, that part of the blade actually sits below the handle. And a lot of knives have swedges, a lot of traditional knives have swedges. Again, I'll show this police, it has a swedge, but they're usually not sharpened. This worker's false edge is actually sharpened. So it is a wider bevel than, than the, the normal edge here, but it's sharp enough that you can definitely use it. It's gonna help with penetration and it's definitely gonna be able to cut. And I actually read on the Spyderco Wiki that Sal designed it so you could just open it a little bit and cut something with that, which is an interesting thought. I'm not sure how much I would use it for that, but it's definitely a cool and interesting feature that honestly Spyderco hasn't done a whole lot on other knives other than this worker. But a lot of really interesting features on this and it's an old knife obviously because it was made from 1981 to 1982. So it's coming up on being a 40 year old knife which is about as old as a modern knife gets. Not only that though, but they didn't make a whole lot of these at the time. This specifically these right-handed models, they only made 960 of, which again, even for, you know, the time isn't a huge amount of knives, but now comparing it to even sprint runs, that's a small amount of knives for Spyderco to have made. So considering that because there's been almost 40 years elapsed since they made them, a lot of them have probably gone missing, been broken, things like that. There probably aren't a whole lot of these left out here in this condition. So speaking of the condition, what is the condition on this? Well, it's actually pretty good. You can see that like pretty much all stainless steel handled knives, there's a good bit of scratches. This one has obviously been carried and used, but there's no big gouges or anything in these kind of scratches, just putting it in and out of your pocket or setting it on a table, things like that can, can make those scratches. So it does have the scratches, but the clip is still in really good shape. It, it doesn't have any play side to side has nice snap still. Um, the, the opening and closing is, is really smooth. As you saw, you can open it one handed really easily. Uh, you can shake it closed with one handed. And 
there's no blade play. Um, opening it up, there's there's really no side to side blade play, no forward and back even, which is kind of a surprise to me because Spyderco has updated the lock geometry of these back or front or mid locks, and it's a surprise to me that this doesn't have any front and back lock rock. So really cool that it is in such good shape. Um, now, it has been sharpened. You can see here that there was some sharpening done. Um, kind of wear, wore at the uh, plunge of the grind here, or the shoulder of the grind, and the tip is rounded. Now this came, you know, with a, or I bought this knife with another knife. I did a video on it. It's a Spyderco C07 police model with the, the pig pride integrity guts um, etching. So check that out. They both had this kind of blunted tip and they came from a uh, detective supposedly. So I'm not sure if it was done purposefully or just not great sharpening or what, but they both had it and that's kind of the biggest issue with this knife is that blunted tip. That's something that I could fix and to be honest with this knife being as cool as it is and honestly as usable it is as it is, there's really nothing wrong with this knife as a using knife. Um, I might just sharpen it to fix that, that tip, to, to sharpen that tip back to being pointy. But, you know, considering its age, considering that it was a used knife, it's in really good shape. And it's something that I'm really excited to have gotten as, you know, I've become more comfortable with the fact that I do collect knives rather than just using them. This is something that's very cool to have in the collection. It's a unique knife, really important knife in the knife history of the knife industry. And just a really nice knife, to be honest, too. Really well designed. Being a small knife, it's about a three inch blade. Again, I'll compare it to the Native 5 being about a three inch, maybe slightly under three inch blade. It feels really good in the hand actually. This handle shape is really comfortable for me even having bigger hands. The thumb ramp is placed really well and just a really comfortable knife. The clip doesn't actually bother my grip very much either. And it's super thin. I mean, this, this would be an extremely easy knife to carry. So I'm almost convincing myself to carry it rather than keeping it as just a collector piece right now as I'm talking about it. But it's a really, really cool knife, one that I'm excited to have gotten. You can see that it was made in Japan, Seki City, Japan, but it's also my Mark Spider Co. USA. And just a really cool knife that I'm happy to have gotten, I'm happy to show off, and I do plan to do an article on it uh, to, to accompany this video. So if you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe to my channel. I hit a uh, thousand subscribers recently, which is really exciting. Thank you all. I really appreciate all of you who you know watch my videos and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you get notified when I post new videos. And then check out my website too, knifethoughts.com, where I will post an article on this knife. That is really helpful for me. It shows what people are interested in. Uh, as well as, you know, I, I do enjoy writing the articles. Uh, it's kind of my, I like to write the articles a lot. It's a good way to let out my thoughts on knives, which is why it's called Knife Thoughts. So check that out. And also please uh, follow me on Instagram, like my Facebook page, and don't forget to go out and do good.